invest in things we already know about and we're comfortable with because all the other options look scary. But why is that? And does that sound like you? I would bet it does sound like you because I feel like it's pretty much all of us. You know, you work your tail off for your money. And even if we're talking royalty money, I bet you worked hard to buy that land or to maintain that land and and to keep that land in your family for years. And now as cash flow finally is starting to pick up and you're able to save some money, why would you invest that money or save that money into anything that made you uncomfortable? You know, there's a stat out there that that talks about, I think it's 70% of lottery winners end up going broke again. Why? That's because they have no experience handling that type of money. They assume that they will buck the trend and none of the bad stuff will ever happen to them. But so often is the case, they become the statistic. They spend way more than they should. They don't map out their future because they don't feel vulnerable. They get bombarded by friends and relatives who need financial help. And they find themselves targeted by salespeople and shysters who they don't take time to vet. And before you know it, that one-time windfall is whittled away by too much going out, no more coming in, bad investments, bad decisions, and horrible outcomes. Now, it doesn't matter to me if you're starting to get wealthy because of an inheritance or sudden royalties or the result of a lifetime of savings and investing in your retirement plans or all of the above. The sole purpose of this video is to help you understand how to keep that wealth. Now stay with me on this and I hope you'll better understand some easy steps that you can take now to make sure you build your wealth and you don't become a statistic. First off, thank you very much for listening in and welcome to our Blue Collar Wealth uh, Podcast Studio. In here, we love talking about anything that's going to help you out. So, so often we hear the term Don't put your eggs all in one basket, right? But still, so often, we go ahead and put those eggs in the one basket. Why is that? We know better than that, don't we? We do it because we're not comfortable with things we know very little about. So, we stick with what we know. But no matter how safe you feel in that one thing, there's always risk, right? Everything has risk. It really does. You need to understand that. Even a CD has risk. If you don't believe me, consider this. During the one to three years your money sits inside a CD at a 4% return, inflation might be double that. At the end of that one to three years, you get your money back, plus the 4% interest that the financial guy or the banker told you was backed by the FDIC. That's all great and wonderful. But inflation is a different type of risk that CDs are not necessarily protected against. And in this example, inflation has knocked the real value of that whole investment down well below where you started. But yet, everyone thinks of something like a CD as safe. So the real question is, safe from what? The reality is that your money is always at some kind of risk from something, from somewhere. Okay, here's my confession. In our office, I've been told that I have a superpower. It's the ability to make an analogy out of almost anything. Personally, this uh, really bums me out. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of Avengers movies, and uh, I've uh, enjoyed poking fun at guys like Hawkeye, you know, the guy with the bow and the arrow, uh, and uh, even poke fun at Ant-Man. I cannot imagine where Analogy Man would rank on their list of important superpowers, uh, which is why you do not see me in the Avenger movies. Anyway... There's a reason I use analogies so often. That's because it's my job. That's right. As an advisor, what good would I be if I didn't speak your language? You see, to be a really good advisor, you need to master two things for sure. One, the ability to recognize patterns. Patterns in the stock market and economic cycles, those are obvious ones. But also patterns all around us. Things we see every day in nature, in our social interactions, and in your behavior, and how you view money. What do you steer away from, and what do you gravitate towards? The second thing you need is the ability to communicate with my clients. 
What good is my message or my idea that I'm recommending if I can't relate it to you? Or if you don't understand what the heck I'm even talking about. <laughs> That's why I kind of love geeking out with my superpower analogies, um, sort of handing them out like Oprah hands out new cars to her audience. And like, you get an analogy, you get an analogy, whatever. You get the visuality. So that's what I'm trying to go for there. So the analogy I want you to imagine for this video, I want you to think about your wealth as a garden with all kinds of things that you've planted in that garden. Why would you plant only one type of food in your garden? Is corn the easiest to grow? Lettuce, tomatoes, zucchini? I would say those must be the easiest because in August and September, that's when all your neighbors come out of the woodwork and they come by and they say, please take these tomatoes and zucchinis. We have way too much of them going on in our garden this year. But, but if you only plant tomatoes and some sort of a blight comes through that year and you're left with nothing because you chose to only plant tomatoes, why would you do that? Why not utilize your ability to plant many things, right? If something knocks those tomatoes down in any given year, hey, there's plenty of other options to feed your family. Let's, let's expand this, uh, that image a little bit now. And now if your garden is only a 10 by 20 patch in the backyard, then maybe overloading into one type of planting still seems okay. But as that garden grows and its potential starts to expand through the years and now resembles something more like an entire field, why would you still only plant tomatoes? Hey, if you're not picking up my whole vibe on the, the analogy superpower thing, I get that. Apparently humor is also not one of my superpowers either. So let me just tie this whole thing in a bow for you so you understand where I'm coming from. It goes back to recognizing those patterns all around us. People work at their gardens because they know that over time it will produce enough food to feed their family. It has a it has a time for planting seeds, a time for nurturing those, maintenance, time for patience sometimes, also a time for harvesting, and even in good years and times of excess production, a time for saving for the future, done in the form of storage, stockpiling, and canning the extra food. Doesn't that sound familiar? It sounds a lot like what we need our wealth to do for us through the years, right? The only advantage you have in gardening is it's far more predictable the cycle that is. So you know roughly when you can start planting and roughly when you can harvest the crops and when things will likely die off for the winter. When it comes to financial crops or products, those cycles are far less predictable. A bull market can last for a year or two or more than a decade. Inflation, as we've seen, can remain dormant for many, many years and then suddenly show up at your doorstep and catch you by surprise. That is all the more reason to work at and plan for sustaining and building your wealth. Don't be a statistic like those lottery people who just assume things are going to work out and foolishly let stuff happen to them. All those reasons I just talked about illustrate why it's important to have the right advisor or coach to help you build this and maintain this wealth as it grows and, and, and for as long as you can. So let me be clear first, though. I used an example earlier about how CDs might not be your best defense against inflation, but I don't want you to get the impression that I'm against CDs. They can be an important part of your whole portfolio. We have clients that have CDs. In fact, many of the CDs that we can put into their accounts right now are paying reasonably higher interest than many of our local banks. That's right. Due to natural gas royalties, many of our local banks are overweighted with deposits. More deposits than they can lend out right now. So we've been seeing a trend currently that their CDs just aren't keeping pace and keeping up with the national rates. But my point is this, that we're recommending CDs when we feel it helps you achieve your long-term goals and they're a good fit in your garden. What bothers me is any time I see people in the financial field start to offer everyone a whole bunch of one thing, like CDs right now or fixed annuities. Of course CDs are an attractive thing when the stock market just had one of its worst periods in history and real estate values are dropping for the first time in a long time. But offering any one product up to an investor like it's the ideal solution for them right now, it's kind of like giving them a sugar high. It's like handing somebody a, cook, a candy bar every time they're, they're feeling hungry. 
sure, you'll be their hero for the, f- the next hour, but how is that really helping them and nourishing them to grow and get stronger over time? I feel like when times are, are good out there, everyone wants to consider themselves an advisor. But when volatility increases and conversations become difficult, a lot of advisors turn back into salesmen and product pushers. It matters far less to me how much of your money you invest versus how you spread that money and those investments out. How many different things are you planting in your garden? Don't give up on one crop or investment just because it had a bad year, and don't overload on one crop just because it's having, it's having a good year now. A true advisor should be encouraging you to spread those investments out, especially as your wealth increases. He or she, they should be showing you all kinds of things that you can consider. And as I started this video by stating that we only want to invest in things that we know about or we're comfortable with, then your advisor should be working with you to show you a lot of options and bringing you up to speed, not only with how they work, but how they fit into your life and why that investment should bring you even more stability and possibly less overall risk versus what you're already doing today. That's what a client and advisor relationship should look like. And as a client, you're always 100% in charge. But as an advisor, if all I ever do is say yes to everything you talk about, then what value do I bring to your life? There has to be some sort of a give and take and a mutual respect for each other, and has to be a clear understanding of what you're trying to achieve over time. Let me run through with you Just a sampling of asset categories you should be considering as your wealth grows. We'll start with cash. That's the money you can get at today if need be. So that'd be things like your checking, your savings, your money markets, uh, very liquid accounts. Then we'll move to like emergency reserves, which should be about three to six months of cash that you would need just in case everything goes bad. Then we move to CDs, which are usually short or midterm investments. You deposit your money into the bank for a predetermined amount of time, and they'll pay you interest for doing so. Pretty basic stuff. Everybody knows, familiar with CDs usually. Uh, Fixed annuities, similar to CDs, but they offer tax-deferred growth, and they're wrapped with an insurance product, which often has bells and whistles that, that usually equate to additional costs versus just a CD. Uh, bonds. Uh, there, there's many different types of bonds, um, each with their own risk and reward. So the general concept behind a bond is that you, know, you are the lender and someone is paying you interest over time. Stocks. Now, this is ownership in a company, usually a public company, that allows you to share in the upside of that company, but also the downside. So there's risk there too. Mutual funds. That's a collection of a whole bunch of stocks and, or sometimes bonds. A mutual fund is a way to quickly gain exposure across many stocks and bonds. And they usually trade at the end of of each day, at the close of business. Uh, Exchange-traded funds, also called ETFs. These are like mutual funds, but more passive, and uh, they're also traded throughout the entire day uh, by the second. Um, Indexed annuities. These are a bit of a hybrid insurance product that gives you some exposure to the stock market, but with limited downside and limited upside. Keep that in mind. Uh, Variable annuities, uh, another insurance product that creates tax deferred growth, but this type usually includes mutual funds within it. And the price of those funds will fluctuate in any given day with the markets. Um, That's what makes it variable actually. Um, And they, they can have all kinds of bells and whistles attached as part of that contract or as a rider. But all of those things have costs involved, which is why these contracts can get pretty pricey inside of variable annuities. Real estate. Uh, Everybody's familiar with the basics. You can invest in more land, commercial properties, or even into real estate investment trusts or REITs, uh, all of which have their own long list of risks on a case-by-case basis. Uh, Small business, maybe not for everybody, but whether it's your family business or your family farm, uh, a startup business where you're investing into an existing company, these can be profitable and exciting, but they also carry a ton of risks, so be careful. There's so much more that I just didn't cover here. (laughs) Cryptocurrency, precious metals, commodities, artwork, collectibles. You want to know the scary part? 
this list can go much, much longer. And I could talk in a lot more detail about each of those items, but don't let that intimidate you from spreading out your money. Even if you crossed off half the things I just listed, that would still leave about eight to 10 different categories, right? How many categories are you invested in today? How many different things do you have planted in your garden? Hey, this has been a bit more complex compared to most of our other videos for sure. So let me wrap it up in a nice clean summary for you, okay? As dollar amounts get bigger, decisions will become more important and your stress levels can climb through the roof sometimes. It's not because you're worried about investing in this thing or that thing. It's because you're worried about the risks or the dangers that you can't see coming. A couple of examples would be having to pay thousands and thousands of dollars more for Medicare because your income was too high in a given year. Or selling something that generates a profit which kicks you up into a higher tax bracket. Or missing out on a tax deduction or a savings that you simply didn't even know was out there. Or having a property or an asset titled the wrong way, causing it to go to someone you never intended or split different ways and then causing unnecessary taxes after you pass. Or maybe worst case scenario, you're losing your land because you didn't take this opportunity to do some planning and educate yourself and your family on how things could work in the future. Don't let yourself be a statistic. You could be a champion here for your family. You don't need to become an expert on all this stuff. You need to be a leader who finds professionals who you can trust and who can assist you to put all these pieces in place. It's not a one-time thing that's super easy, but it shouldn't feel overwhelming either. If you partner with the right people, it should make it far easier, which is why we encourage you to, to hit that easy button and reach out to us for a conversation if you haven't already. Through some of our programs like Fuel Your Future, uh, and our future you analysis, along with our, our detailed tax analysis, we're combining our financial planning professionals and our tax professionals, and we're making it easier than ever. If you reach out to us, we'll see you soon. And if you opt to go it alone, we wish you the very best of luck, but still keep us in mind in case you stumble along the way, or if you'd like a second opinion on whatever you're doing, we'll be here. 